left hand screen you'll see live yeah here we go we are live welcome to life with joey calvo podcast i am joey calvo today i have the most awesome honor if you love blue bloods like i have for the past three years this guy is fun to watch it's greg jabara who plays dcpi garrett moore good morning welcome joey yes Thank you for getting me up. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Like I said earlier um, in our little chat, and I normally I wear glasses. I got tired of glasses after a bit. But um, you have been acting for thirty plus years. My my parents would say sixty years. Yeah. Well. Oh yeah, yeah. I wasn't going to give out your age. <laughs> well, who says that's how old I am? I know. I know. Right. I know. Right. Yeah, so I came across Greg on his website, gregoryjabara.com. Oh, someone and, actually visits it. Thank you. You are the yeah, single yeah, hit that uh, website's had in the most yeah, recent time. Yeah, well, well, that's how I got the email to actually get to him personally because he put it in the, in, at the, in the, in the contact section. And I said, let me check this out. And, I, you know, I, I asked him, I said, you I want you to come. I would love for you to come on the podcast. And I said, you can surprise me with any guests, but unfortunately they're all busy. So, but, um, he has been on blue bloods for 12 years, um, 12 seasons. And I learned something about Greg that I don't think anybody else knew or if they did, this isn't your first time working with Tom Selleck. Who? Who are we talking about? Oh, right. <laughs> no, you're absolutely right. Um, he and I met oh, oh, 25 years ago, maybe now, when we shot the movie In and Out. Yep. And uh, and he, uh, we became, you know, just casual working friends. Yeah. Shooting that movie. Yeah. And uh, I'm very grateful and proud to admit that. Uh, Blue Bloods is the third TV job that he has given me since we met making that oh, film 25 see, this years is what ago. I didn't catch. Yeah. So let me guess. Could it be Magnum? No, no, no. The The other two shows were um, projects that weren't nearly as successful as Blue Bloods. Oh, okay. okay. I the was first, thinking about because yeah, I know were, he's doing another Jesse Stone film. He is. He has several uh projects going on yeah but um the that these other sh shows were i believe cbs projects okay uh one was the the first one was a sitcom mm -hmm. called the closer uh not the kira sedgwick drama but the um it was a sitcom that also starred ed asner and david crumholtz a very oh, young wow. david crumholtz wow uh, mm -hmm. Penelope Ann Miller, uh, among others. Um, did I say Ed Asner? Yes, and then, did. um, he was they, a great actor, by the way. I uh, enjoyed him, he was a phenomenal actor. Yeah, uh, also another very dear friend who is yeah. sorely missed. Um, yeah, but uh, yeah, we shot that sitcom. I, I was a guest, they yeah. had they had mm -hmm. um done a table read on a Monday for a new episode. They decided the actor they had was not the right fit. Right. So they had a casting session that evening and right. I showed up. It was a small group of mm -hmm. actors they saw and Tom was in the room and it was actually probably since the movie premiere, it was the first time he and I had, uh, had seen each other. And then, so he hired me for that. And then th he did a single camera comedy uh, that, we, we shot a pilot for, and I was yeah. going to be a recurring guest star on that as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but we, we only shot the pilot. It was called uh, touch them all McCall. Ah, and okay. uh, if you, yeah, both, both those titles, I think exist in, in IMDB. You can well, find them. I didn't see it on Google. Just like, yeah, but yeah, they're, they're not, yeah. Prominently placed, I guess. But I, as I was going through your list of acclimates, you actually and and I saw Crocodile Dundee too. Oh yeah, yeah. So how was it like to work with Paul Hogan? Let's see. 
Um, he's much shorter than I expected. Wow. Uh, he's only about five, six, I think. And what was interesting was, um, when I auditioned, it was, was it Diane Crittenden? I keep forgetting who the casting, in in any event, when I went in to read, um, and it was with the director, uh, who also was Australian, but I almost didn't get the job because the director, when he's too tall, he can't be in a scene with. Paul Hogan mm-hmm. and and the casting director said he's sitting down he's sitting down at the breakfast table they'll never be standing next to each other I want him and the director went and the oh okay wow yeah. and then I got the gig yeah um and it, it ended up being uh it, it was a lot of fun because it was yeah. it was that scene was not only food but it was also uh some special effects with some bullet fire from a sniper mm-hmm. coming across the street and yeah there was leaping out of windows uh, and there was, um, it was a fun I, movie. It yeah. And I got to work movie. with I Ken Walsh, Ken yep. Walsh. And, uh, Oh, why am I, uh, now I'm blanking. He, it was, it was like his first big, he was hilarious. Um, and I'm, I'm now too old to remember people's names, but it was a bunch of, you know, Mm-hmm. Although Ken Welsh was uh, established at that time, yeah, yeah. The other actor, I can't you, think of his name. I'll and then you there. did Exit Speed with Leah Thompson. Uh, wait, who, Thompson? who was in Exit Speed? Oh yeah, yeah. oh yeah. 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 Emma, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, we got to, we had a, yeah, we we were not. We, did you see that film? No. Yeah, we remember. We I'm going off the Google list. We were not friends in that movie. Yeah, uh, but but oh, she was lovely. Yeah, oh, yeah. Um, that yeah, that film was uh, produced by fellow Michiganders, actually. Um, mm-hmm. Well, and and written and directed by, well, actually, it was dec- not directed, but yeah, uh, Michael Stokes wrote wrote the feature. Mm-hmm. His wife Sally Helpy went. To, we went to the same high school. We oh, missed wow. each other by a year, but mm-hmm. yeah, they've. They've gratefully, like Selick, they've yeah. actually uh, also said, hey, Greg, we have a film. You want to come to Texas and yeah. and blow things up? Yeah. And then you did The Outer Towners with Steve Martin and John Cleese. Yeah. Actually, I worked with Steve Martin and Goldie Hawn. Yeah. And, and also um, Josh Mostel. Mm-hmm. And also... Um, I don't re- didn't really a uh, lovely actress who from Sex and the City uh, who Cynthia played a Nixon. drug addict in that scene. Uh, but yeah, it was very funny. The the they had there was an option mm-hmm. which was uh, they said, "Well, we we, we like you. We want, we want to bring you into the film. You can either play the role of the baggage claim guy at the the sky cap at the airport, mm-hmm. or we have this person at a you know twelve step addiction." Um, meeting, mm-hmm. which was much funnier and mm-hmm. much more uh, inappropriate. And yeah. I went, oh, that's what I want to do. That's yeah. And then you got the chance to work with the late Fred Willard, and uh, even we Cat did. Williams, and even Cat Williams, and also some SNL personalities like Daryl Hammond and Taryn Killiam, uh, a very young Taryn Killiam at the time. But um, believe it or um, not, Ira and Abby. Yeah, I actually only worked with Fred. You only yeah. worked with Fred, yeah. Fred, and and Joe Buck was actually. Yeah, I, I know. I looked at that. I was like, he actually did a cameo in that. Wow. Yeah. And even Carmen Electra was in this, and I was like, wow. And Jennifer yeah, there were a lot of people in that movie. Yeah. Yeah, it was kind of a nice little sort epic of movie. Of New York epic actors. movie. Yeah, oh, it was like. It oh, was like oh, a you, no, well, Ira and Abby was the one that had Fred Willard. This one also. This one was epic movie. Fred also. was also an epic movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, he they have him in well the cast. Mm-hmm. Yeah, although I didn't work with Fred on that. I worked with... Um, in Cal Iron Penn. Abbey. You just... Yeah, I had that. Yeah, Cal Penn. Uh, Cal Penn yep. and I did a scene where I got to play Mel Gibson. Yeah, I heard... I, got, I actually now got to get some of these movies now. You do. It was like, epic movie is like one of those um, spoof movies of like scary movie and, you know, and, 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 and um, kick it which was the superhero movies and all that. And I got to see them, but you also got to work with two Princeton graduates. Are you yourself a Princeton graduate? No, I'm not. 
I am actually an associate's degree graduate from a business school in Woodbridge, New Jersey. I, I lived about 20 minutes from Princeton. I lived in around New Brunswick area. I know exactly where that is. Yeah. New Brunswick, Somerset. Isn't that's where Rutgers is, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And I went, I studied one semester at some, at, 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 uh, at Rutgers and the best thing about living at Rutgers. Well, I didn't live at Rutgers. I actually lived, like I said, in Somerset, which was like 10 minutes away. Um, but it was like a 20 minute walk at least was the food, what they called the food trucks. They had a section of food trucks, grease trucks. Yeah. And I used to remember, and folks, just to let you know, I don't edit these podcasts, so I'm going to about to say something that might make people uncomfortable, but there was a sandwich called the fat bitch. Oh, great. It was a, I know it was several cheese, of those. It was a cheesesteak with fries and mozzarella sticks and all that jazz. But you got to work with Brooke Shields on her show, Suddenly Susan. Not that we're equating that term you just used with Brooke Shields, because I've no, heard no, that from the truth. No, Brooke, if you're if you somehow see this podcast, we're not calling you a fat bitch. Okay. No. You're, you're, we're not calling anybody that. No, we're not calling it. It was a sandwich. Except, except it for was a sandwich. sandwich, guys. That's right. We're it's talking about sandwich. sandwiches. Yeah, it was a sandwich. I'm gonna clarify it's a sandwich. Brooke, you are still the great, you're still looking beautiful at your age. I'll even I'll even get to surprise you on this. I actually had Carol, Carol Alt on my podcast about a year ago. Carol Alt, model Carol Alt, yeah. Oh yeah, she's like yeah. one of the she's like of the Cheryl Teagues era of yeah, like supermodels, yeah. right? But yeah, yeah. And believe it or not, would she I, be offended I, I, if I said that? I mean, she might be younger than. Um, no, but they're both beautiful. No, ladies, you're the yeah. same age as her. As Carol Alt. Mm-hmm. Well, it looks a lot better on her. She, oh, right? oh, she was fun to chat with. And Although I thought, you haven't seen me in a bikini, but yeah. <laughs> she's, she's <more> <laughs> but you also got to work with Sybil Shepherd too, on her show. And I, I did. I watching it. I remember watching it. That was one of the shows that I used to watch. Really? Cool. Yeah, cool. that was my, well, that, actually, that was my first, when my wife and I moved to Los Angeles, that was my first TV job at CBS oh, Radford. Right. And then it ended up when I had my long running five season recurring gig on um, uh, Grounded for Life. We were in the exact yeah, same sound. I, I was, I was going to get, I did, ha I did see that. So you were working with Donald Logue, who was actually also on, um, who did guest spots on Law and Order SVU, another show I watch. Who has it? Except Logue. for me. Actually, I'm the only person who hasn't guest starred on no, Law and Order but, SVU. I, I know, but that's because two conflicting shows in my case. No, well, all right. But what's the original Law and Order? Uh, Law and Order. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it, the, it, the, the joke is um, if you if you haven't worked on Law and Order, you're probably never going to work ever if you're a New York actor. Oh, wow. And, and, and I was I did not get my first and only guest star mm. on that until its final season. Wow. Oh, so you yeah. were on Law and Order. Yes. Oh, and, wow. and you and you know who the villain was? You know who the uh it was a young Adam Driver. Wow. Was, was yeah. It, yeah, it was a it was actually it was a that was a fun job. Um who else? Timothy Busfield? Yeah, I've heard of him. Yeah. He was a gut he, he you know from 30 something days. He's also yeah, I remember Timothy Busfield, yeah. Very very accomplished director, producer. He he guessed it on this yeah. as a lawyer and yeah. He was. He probably like, played through the book at the guy. At, no, no, he Adam was Driver. hilarious. He oh. was like, he was like a director's worst nightmare. Yeah. He loved cracking people up oh. and making faces. If 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 the camera was over his shoulder on you, yeah, he he'd be crossing his eyes and making googly face just to try and get you to bust up. It was I, he was so you, much fun. He was and great. you even got to work with Dame Judi Dench. I did in a cartoon. Called Home on the Range, and believe it or not, oh, she was she was on Home on the Range, wasn't she? Yes, with yeah, we, Charles Hayde. Who? With who else? Charles Hayde. Who? Believe it or not, if you go through Hill Street Blues, your co-worker, your colleague in crime, Bob Clohessy, was on that show. Oh which yeah, I didn't even know about it. With hair. Yeah. With her. Right. <laughs> right. 
So, so we're, we're definitely going to jump into blue bloods. I'm not forgetting this, guys. But there's just so many things about Greg that you would be amazed. He did, actually, he did two projects with Sybil Shepherd. He did her TV show, Sybil, and she did another show, a movie called Married to It. Oh, oh, yeah. 1991. Yeah, but who who did I worked with Robert Sean Leonard and uh yeah, I, I love you that you know, right, on, on IMDB it connects you to every actor that's ever appeared in the same project you've done. But in fact, the real exposure and contact was much more limited. But that's yeah. right, she was on that as well. And you even did Ripley's Believe It or Not with Dean Cain. Uh now that is true. Um uh, my my brother Dan Jabara was mm -hmm. the executive producer of that. Oh. And he hired me as the uh, the narrator. I did all the, I did yeah. all the all the stuff that Dean didn't narrate. You know, right. the, the voiceover stuff was that that was me for for oh. many many years. Thanks well, he's also a Princeton Dan. graduate too, believe it or not. And you really? know the little you know the little story between him and Brooke Shields back then. They were actually supposedly dating at one time. Sure, why yep. not? Yeah, <laughs> and then you did. Um, Broken City. Oh yeah. With Mark Wahlberg, but you know who Mark Wahlberg's brother is no, on who? your show, Donnie. <laughs> yeah. I was fighting, you know, I'm fighting all these little things to pick at you with. I actually I actually got to work with the scene that I was in was both with um Russell Crowe and Mark Wahlberg. It yep. was a it, that was a, a very long but fun night. Shooting. And then you also did World Trade Center with Nicolas Cage and Maria <laughs> Bello, who had worked with Bridget Moynihan in Coyote Ugly. The world is this big. And for those of you who are only listening, my thumb and finger are making a space <laughs> smaller than a half inch. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm throwing all these things at him. I, I, told, I showed him the list beforehand. So I knew, I knew, I said, I got it. I got to try to play match match blue bloods into these. So that's well, most of them, every one of them I was looking at, I was like, I got to find somebody that's connected with within blue bloods to do it. Yeah. So now we're going to get into blue bloods now. So last season, episode 14, before the, the uh, oh, no, 13, let me get my Rolodex out. <laughs> where you threw Frank <laughs> under the bus, quote unquote. Where you were on the front page of the post. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. When, hey, Frank, it could get better. Oh, that's the episode. Was that episode 14? Let me double check. Oh, I guess because I'm thinking we only shot 14 last year during COVID, but I guess they, but they, the, they, we, we, we they had one or two in the can, didn't we? They left, yeah, they labeled 14 because the two part season finale was right after it, was right that following week. Oh, okay. I believe yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the new you, I think, was the name of that episode. Mm, yes, right. Yes. Where, where Garrett starts drinking his own Kool Aid and goes a little too far with. Oh yeah, yeah. Health and honesty, but it, but you make you, Bob and Abigail make that show so interesting. Probably Don't get make me wrong. It great. Right. I love I love the cast. I I actually got interested in Vanessa Ray first, but then when I I was like, wait a minute. I remember seeing Bridget in Coyote Ugly because my ex, I don't know if it was my ex-wife. I know the person I spend time now with, she loves the movie. So now, and we talked last night, I told her, I said, you know, I, I got this actor coming on and, 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 and he works with, and she's a little older than you are, believe it or not. Wow. She does not, she's she did on. not know who I was talking about when I mentioned Bridget Moynihan. I said, she's one of the ladies that had longer hair at the time. She was one of the bartenders in Coyote Ugly. She's like, oh. I said, I gotta get you the DVD now. She's got the she's got the CD with Leanne Rhymes on it. So the Australian actor who played the male lead, can we come up with his name? Oh God. I can't remember. Uh he played his, his name was Adam. Garcia. His character's name was Adam. But right. I remember Piper Parabo. Last name Garcia. First name, it's uh 
I'm ashamed, I'm ashamed that it's escaping me, but he and I had done even a different movie together. Oh, really? So there's another. Yeah. Uh, Coyote. Yeah, he, there, there you go. He, I, you know what? I have to go. Through. Maybe it's one of the that I might have mentioned. Garcia, uh, the first 20 million is the other that, film. That's what it was. Okay. I didn't go through every one of them. There were also so many. With, oh, actually, uh, also with an amazing cast. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but we could so, talk about everyone else all day. So, but also getting back to Blue Bloods, there was oh, yeah, an right. episode besides the new you, but there was a whole episode almost dedicated to each one of you, to Abby, to to Sid, to, to Garrett. Right. Where you also had your separate episodes. Like last year, um, Abby was attacked. Right. And I mean, it was like full commando with all he is at the time. And yeah. I, I loved it because you got to see each character separately. I mean, you had your the, the episode where you were like almost not wanting to talk to anybody until Frank came to the hotel room and you explained about the marriage being, you know, falling apart and, and so on. And I think Sid had his problem with marriage as well at one time. And I mean, each, but it was so good for each one. Yeah. The writers do a really wonderful job um, giving all of us, you know, cause it, it is, it's called blue bloods. It's about the Reagan family. Right. But there are, you know, there are a handful of us who are, you know, constant recurring characters and they, the, the writers are really great about, giving us all at least one really golden nugget of an episode right where well, we feel you know that we're that, that that's very validating and a wonderful you know acting challenge and mm -hmm. um that that isn't always the case uh, mm -hmm. on some shows but for us yeah. it's uh and, I, and that's why i like I'm very it grateful for that yeah. and that's why i like it because it brings out almost every character like um this past week it was Jamie and Eddie, which is Will Estes and Vanessa Ray. Right. Where where um, Eddie is actually studying to go for the sergeant's exam. Yeah. Do we? But, oh, so, can we talk? We, yeah, it's already aired. So yeah, spoilers yeah, that, don't matter. matter right? Yeah. I know. I was like going, oh, no. Yeah. I didn't read because I never read. I yeah. never read the other storylines on our yeah. show. So but, when I go to watch it. At least yeah. there's something that'll be interesting to me. Yeah. Other than but, staring at myself, which I find oh, incredibly oh, interesting. Of course. But this <laughs> week, now, you know, I mentioned about how each character has their own storyline. Yeah. Now, the season ending, of course, was the whole Reagan family because of Joe Hill um, working for the ATF undercover. And that was a very, I mean, it was done so well, I was, I, 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 I was, oh, see, I, like I said, I caught the DVR last night, so I'm still back on the season premiere, but I did watch Friday, this past Friday's episode. I can't wait till this Friday's episode because Frank now comes into question, which leads me to this question. Is this going to be the end of Blue Bloods? So my, my accountant just had a heart attack. Uh, at the uh, potential of the answer for that. Oh, um, okay. No, there is no, um, I can't say that there isn't, but here's what I can say is that I, I we don't, we're not actually notified of the uh -huh. fate of the show. Okay. Until the end usually of the season? a week, a week or two before they do the CBS upfronts. Okay. Okay. Um, and here's the reason for it. Mm. it. This is my perception. Yeah. You tell, you tell one person on our show mm -hmm. that we're definitely picked up. That information spreads like wildfire. Oh yeah. And then if CBS is trying to keep their cards close to their chest about their scheduling plans for the following season. Right. There's no way there, you can't let that news out because it will, I mean, it'll become everybody in the industry, especially in New York, everybody's going to know in the blink of an eye, right. whether the show's on or off. Right. So, and I, I, I think that CBS, this is only my perception, but yeah. I think they enjoy 
letting the other networks throw all of their content, That's new true. programming yeah. at Friday night in hopes of winning the evening going, I don't know if Blue Bloods is coming back. Let's take a shot at trying yeah. to, you know, get the demo. Yeah. And then CBS goes, oh, we're bringing our show back that like blows yeah. everybody out of the water at 10 o'clock. So yeah, good luck but with that. The challenge would be if you went, if you, if you guys got moved to Thursday nights, because that would be the challenge right there. Okay. Well, that'll never happen. Oh, but yeah, we, yeah, we figured out because right. it, it would, it would be even more difficult if it were like Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. Yeah. But that's because law and order SVU is on at nine and then, mm. Organized crime with Christopher Maloney at, is at ten, so is that's that, why I'm saying you know are those NBC be, shows? Those are NBC shows, yeah. yeah. Christopher yeah. Maloney, what do, what do he and I have in common? Oh, I don't know. I didn't look. You know, <laughs> can you see what I'm pointing at? Oh, oh! Speaking of that, he's a, he's a Detroiter, I believe. Ah, uh, but speaking of that. Your coach was one of my favorite team's coaches. Stanford or, nope. or San Diego nope. State? Nope. The 49ers? You got it. Wait, what are you doing being a 49ers fan? I'm a Jersey boy. I never liked the Giants or Jets. Joe well, Montana. You have, you have the hat. I have the hat. You have the hat. That means I you're... have the shirt. I have Terrell Owens' jersey packed away. Does he know? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> he's been walking around naked for a while. He pissed <laughs> off at somebody, and I think you're to blame. Yeah. And then, and then um, so you also, um, even though I've never seen it happen, I'm waiting to see this happen. Mm -hmm. I'm waiting to see. I will not be wearing Jim Harbaugh's shirt, so let's. Oh no, I wasn't gonna say that. Okay. No, I wasn't gonna say that. No, because you have to wear a suit most of the time. No, I'm talking about. Um, I have actually worn a few Michigan sweatshirts on the show. Y yes, yes. I gotta catch. Sometimes I gotta catch them. Sometimes I have to catch it. But, um, yeah. If you remember back in 2000, when the Niners played the Ravens in Super Bowl. God, 40 the Harbowl. The Harbowl, yep. Mm -hmm. That's why I said that, because at the time, he was the coach of the Niners. Oh, yeah. But, um, you know, the their father, Jack, yeah, uh, is a huge Blue Bloods fan. And what? actually, um, Jack and his wife and Jim and Jim's son, James, all <laughs> came to set and visited the show a couple of years ago. You know what? And it was I, a big, big, big highlight of our cast and crew to. Oh, uh, I would the love to be there myself. Storied Harbaugh family, yeah. I would Those love to be family. on the set because it not only well, comes that's not going to happen. Oh, I can assure you. Oh uh, no! There will oh, be I know, nobody visiting our set. Oh, probably no. till you know if we if we manage to do another two or three seasons. I can't. Oh no no no, COVID, no no no! I understand. No, but I, it's the COVID thing. Yeah. Is, oh yeah. Our whole yeah. social life has gone. Literally out the window. Hence that episode, the new you. <laughs> I had to throw that back. I couldn't help that. Wait, wait, um, wait. What's the reference though? The the, the new, new you. you. Oh, that it's our new. It is our new. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's the new normal. Yeah, but, but I'm we're still working through it, so I'm not yeah. complaining because yeah. they're you know we have a job. Yeah, but I'm waiting for an episode where Stephen Sherpa, who plays. Anthony at the Marco. Steve Shrippa. Yep. Did you say Sherpa? I like that. I That's Sherpa. actually better. Yeah, it's Shrippa. I, it's it's, Shur I thought it was Sherpa. Steve Shrippa. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like Rippa, Shrippa. Shrippa, yeah. I, Steve, I love you. I know you were in The Sopranos with Michael Imperioli, and you're coming into poor God at the end of the month, I think it is. I apologize if I butcher your name if you're watching this. Oh, listen, we all have the worst last names. I'm sure he's heard worse. Yeah, but um, but I, I know you had Michael Imperioli in the office at one time. Yeah. With, and yeah. and he's actually going to be here in Atlantic City. Um, with Steve doing their Soprano show, right? Oh, we froze. That's not a good thing. At least you're frozen. Oh, well, okay. Yeah. We're not completely gone. 
Oh, I'm here. Good. Oh, don't tell me my Wi-Fi. My wife, the Wi-Fi in this. It could be this, me. I'm in a hotel, and yeah. you know what time is it? It's it's ten twenty. I'm sure everybody in this hotel has suddenly turned on their computers to watch the Blue Origin space launch, which is now. Oh, it's still on hold. They still put it hold. back on hold for four and a half minutes, and then they have another fifteen minute. T minus count. So okay, so about nineteen minutes. All right. If it happens. If if it happens, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're still trying to get William Shatner to learn his lines <laughs> in the capsule. I I did watch. So I I did watch him in TJ Hooker. That's how old I am. And I'm only with, ten years. And I'm only ten Adrian's years. Adrian's Med, you. right? What? Adrian's Med and TJ yep. Hooker. Yep. And a young Heather Lockyer. Yeah. Was that pre nine zero two one zero? Pre, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That was that was just before. That was around the time you did um. The out of towners, I believe. What year was? No, really? no, no, no. DJ no, Hooker. What no, year no. was that? Crocodile Dundee two. Oh, oh, that was like eighties. It was eighties. Oh, the eighties. I don't 80s. even remember the eighties. Yeah. yeah. You're just a few. It's a handful of dead brain cells. <laughs> Hey, I graduated in 89, okay? so Oh, you're um, a kid, for crying out loud. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, I'm only 10 years younger than you are, believe it or not. Wait, we're not talking age. Are I know. Really? Right? Oh, my God. Oh, oh, I've been saying it anyway. There goes I our just, subject matter for the end of the conversation. No. Yeah, that, that, that is true. 10 years, huh? 10 years, yeah. 10 years difference between us. Wow. Yeah. Um. But, so, now, my other question I have for you mm -hmm. Now, everybody, like I said, I told you about this Facebook group that literally wouldn't let me promote you, even that you were coming on this podcast. But you must have alienated a lot of people in that group. No, that's what the administrator sent me back. No, I'm joking. Yeah, I know no, you're joking. Yeah, I know you're no, joking. No, they do. They, they, yeah. They're, they're they don't so want to. Well, they're, they're leery that because there's all those fraud t-shirt sales and all that other stuff that you, you know, know they, they do that for the wonder woman that comes one. on yeah they do that for the wonder woman one they do they have that for the wonder woman one and i'm like the, the administrator just like lets it throw just to chuck them up but Donnie Wahlberg i've heard of him yeah of course and Maritza Ramirez who played yep. um, Danny and Bias. She'll be thrilled you pronounced her name correctly. Yes. Oh, I, I all right. I kind of got a little crush on her and Bridget, but get in line, pal. <laughs> well, on. I think that's it too. But see, I, I know they're all married and have kids and stuff. Well, except for Vanessa. Vanessa doesn't have kids yet. But you no, know, but uh, Vanessa's married. Abby's married. We, I mean, we got some. Yeah, it, yeah. It's like you went, oh, we're just going to. They're not just going to be great actresses. They're also going to make your knees weak when you see yeah, them. Okay. Yeah. Oh, All yeah. Oh, yeah. But yeah. do you see Danny and Maria in a relationship, in your personal opinion? My professional opinion? Your personal opinion. My personal opinion. Okay, so I don't have to be professional about it. No. Um, no, it, it's not practical. It's not practical. Okay. No, because we already have two people working together on the job and in love. Yeah. That's um, Jamie and Eddie. Yep. You know, but um, revisiting the tension, I think can be interesting. Yeah. But once you've consummated that, mm -hmm. then where do you go? Yeah. Either, either you have to blow the whole relationship up and then it gets really ugly or uh -huh. they are together and they can't work together or, okay. you know, it's like, there's a, just um, in terms of what we like them just practically in the show. Well, it would it would be such a huge change. Yeah. Well, that, Donnie, uh, well, Donnie went on the on the talk, and Maritza came on, just slid in right next to it, and they he literally stated, "You're not going to see it happen because if you see it happen, there'll be less scenes of us." That's what he literally said, and I was like, "You got almost to. verbatim what I just said." Yeah. It's yep. like I channeled that interview, although yep. I didn't see it. That's yep. when I just claimed that was, for our audience. That was before, I think that was just before the season premiere they did that, when they did that. Sure. Yeah. I'm surprised you haven't been on the talk yet, you know? <laughs> Which, is that a CBS show? That is the CBS show at 2 p.m. Eastern time, and they just got um, 
Uh, Natalie okay. Morales from NBC. Is Jerry on that? Jerry O'Connell, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, he and I work together. Yeah. Oh wow. We're Can gonna out we're gonna we're, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna do a new version of um, the six degrees of Kevin Bacon into the six degrees of Gregory Jabara. Well, you know, I am ten years older than you, so I've been yeah. working for quite a while. Yeah, that, that, that's also the interesting thing too about yeah, you know, um, yeah. suddenly being on a show that's so high profile. Yeah, everybody goes, "Oh my God, who's this actor who came out of nowhere?" Yeah, and you go, "Well, yeah. well, actually, yeah. I've been doing this my whole life, but yeah. I wasn't always, you know, on the TV, on the know, TV or in the movies or or in a lot of movies until like I went through the." And well, then there yeah, was, I was in a lot of movies. Charlie. Yeah, there, but yeah, I mean, it, when I went through some of them, some of them were like, like war games. You were a narrator, a narrator for. Well, you know, you know, you never brought up was my fifteen-year Broadway career. No. So there's that's the other thing. Most people ah. that watch TV aren't getting up off their butts, buying their plane tickets, purchasing those ho the very expensive hotel rooms and mm -hmm. Broadway theater tickets and coming to support the arts of New York. That's the other so, thing. That's what I've been doing. Are you talking about you being a Victor Victoria? <clears throat> yeah, among many others, yeah. Yeah, sure. yeah. No, I have Victor Victoria. Okay, good. I, I did have that on my list. I'm glad we brought that up. That also I don't know, because that, Julie Andrews. That, yeah. Julie Andrews is a great actress. Yeah. But I didn't know. But, I didn't oh, know Michael Nori was the was also the, a great actor. I hope he's not listening. No, I didn't say that. I thought it was um in the movie. There was another guy. I thought that she was in love with. He, yeah, it was Tom Selleck's mentor from TV days. Uh, uh, Maverick. Uh, I'm James that Garner? age now. No. You talk about James Garner? Yeah, James Garner. That was that was he was in he was her love and he he played King Marshawn in the movie. I thought there was a I'm thinking of Robert Preston. And Robert Preston played. That's who Mark I was Scotty. thinking of. That's right. who I was thinking of more. Than yeah. I forgot James Garner was in that. Yeah, that's I'm who thinking. she her character was in love with. And yeah. Toddy was her friend confidant. Yeah, yeah. But I mean I that I mean that that's a I mean it's a great list. I mean you got to work with, even got to work, even when we go back to Home to the Range, when I mentioned about Dame Judy Dench and Charles Haight, you even worked with Roseanne. Well, she was in that film, but I actually was never in the studio. You with never her. were in the studio with her. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And like I said, you know, working with Brooke Shields. And but I've worked with Liza. I've worked with B.B. Newworth, Jonathan Price, John well, Lithgow. Yeah. Oh, you know, there's, John there's, Lithgow. Those are, Funny. Those are the amazing folks, Joanna Gleason. Yeah, uh, there's an amazing TV. lot of yeah, like more TV film personalities who also done Broadway. Yeah, yeah, and I, I do remember. Um, oh, God. see, I've never been to a Broadway show. Okay, you have to. You have to. Yeah, I know. Uh, I have that to, list of all the things you I want gotta, to ask that's, me. That's going to be on my bucket list since I'm more now. Broadway I have more a little more time in my life uh, to do things. I'm only an hour and a half away from the. I know you have no excuse. I don't. Well, you take the right train now, since all I the way the here. Job I had uh, the finances are kind of just like you just had earlier, but a little bit lower than. <laughs> but we're working on. Just like I'm working on going to Vegas in December, which I went in July though for my to celebrate my fiftieth. Finally, after like five trips. Five, oh, what, five a, what a lovely reason to go. Yeah. But, uh, and I only spent one night and I like was over at the Excalibur and I crossed over Las Vegas Boulevard and I went, went to the Tropicana, left the Tropicana and went to what was formerly the Hooters Casino. And as I'm walking the parking lot, I trip and scrape up my leg. I'm like, how can I not fall anywhere I go? <laughs> you know, like, I have to leave a mark somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. But, but um, so you let's have scars to prove your life adventures. That's not yes, bad. yes. So uh, we gotta get back to blue bloods. So this episode okay. coming up, um, with Frank. Now I don't, I don't, I know it's already been filmed, and I 
told you it's been leaked out already on Facebook. Wait, um, what's been leaked already? It's been yeah. Wait, what what has? What specifically? This episode, Friday. This coming Friday. Oh, the storyline? The storyline. Has it been the, leaked or did like CBS tease it? It's been leaked. Oh, it's and what, actually, what? it's actually on the met that Facebook group I told you about. Oh, and and what the was brings it I out. I didn't see it. Yeah. Where Frank um goes to his former partner and was offered a job. Which huh. I'm waiting to find out what type of job. It's supposed to be a, um, a security type thing, I think. I don't know. I'm waiting to see what the episode is, but I also DVR it. Um, but, yeah, Frank is contemplating either staying as a um, police commissioner or going or accepting this job with his friend. Well, it's about time the mayor's not treating him well. Uh, yeah, I know. That was the other thing. And, I, yeah, I... I I, this past Friday's episode, I I was like really shocked that he literally just said to 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 Frank, "Just give me your resignation." I'm like, "Listen, bitch," <laughs> you know, and, and and being how tough Tom is in character with it, I I knew he was going to put up a fight, and I'm glad you guys all stood behind him on it. I really did. And, I, and that's what I love about the show is everybody stands together in one way or another. You well, know? You know, that's that's the writing. Yeah. And I, I and the writers, I give a lot of credit. A lot. I mean, I, I really hope that this goes on um longer than he did Magnum P.I. I think I think he's done longer than Magnum P.I. with this show now. I think we have I have already no celebrated more episodes than he did Magnum, yes. Yeah, yeah. And he's and he's got the Jesse Stone projects, of course. Which, like I said, I would look when if when you do when you have those little side talks, I would love for him to come on this podcast. I would because there's so much because he just celebrated his 33rd wedding anniversary. And really, I remember me and Julie are married that long. Mm hmm. It's leaked. It's it's in that Facebook group. Well, that's not leaked. I think you can Google that. Yeah. No. I mean, he boasts. He boasts about when he met her. Yeah. When he fell in love with her, when he saw her on stage in oh, yeah. Cats on the West End. You know? Yeah. I remember when he did Friends. I remember when he was when he Courtney. Did Friends. When he was Courtney Cox's love interest. Without a mustache. Without a mustache. Without a mustache. Who knew? Who knew he could act without a mustache? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Right? We we you couldn't even recognize. Him. And so. Out of what you're seeing and, and, and all these guest appearances, like Gloria Rubin, who um, yeah. did, um, who was in the, the, season, uh, the season finale and uh, uh, last season, who would you like to see come on the show as a guest star? I know you have Callie Thorne, who plays um, the medium that Danny goes to see. Right. I, I, and, and people think there's going to be a love interest there. I, I don't see it. I didn't watch the rest of the episode yet either. So I'm I'm still in the dark on that part. We we just shot an episode with Ilfanesh Hadera, who is amazing. Mm -hmm. Um but I, I can't tell you what, why, or how she's involved. But we'll we'll find um, out as the episodes come up. Yeah, I'll just, understand just, just check that 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 Blue Bloods chat thread, I'm sure they're going to leak it. Oh, yeah. Now. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever um, episode it'll be. But um, um, the, the, uh, what I've learned is I've stopped. Um, uh, the casting office actually offered me to make some suggestions when they were looking to cast, actually cast the role of my wife in an episode we did a couple of seasons ago where mm -hmm. Garrett and his wife got squatted at their home in the middle of the night. And, at first, I thought, oh, how sweet that Bowling Misha is actually going, hey, Greg, are, who, are there any actresses you'd like us to bring in to consider? Mm -hmm. And then I thought about it, and I and I went, you know, I don't want that responsibility. Because if word ever got out, I mean, there are so many phenomenal actresses that yeah. could play that role. But if any of them found out that they weren't on the list that I had recommended, I'd be dead neat. You know, for all, any of my close friends. So yeah. I, I, after uh, maybe a, 
maybe a half a day of consideration, I, I contacted the casting office back and said, you know what? Thank you. That's really lovely. But I, I'm freaking out at the pressure. Yeah. And and you yeah. guys are so good at what you do. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just go ahead and, <clears throat> excuse me, go ahead. You can just do your normal casting magic. And then they ended up, they cast Rebecca Eichenberger, who I have known. Oh, wow. I was at her wedding more wow. than 25 years ago. Wow. And I thought, well, see, they're just, that casting office is just, they're just genius. Yeah. And they are. Yeah. I mean, every single person they bring into the show, you just go, oh, this is the perfect fit. This is the, the that's the right call. So yeah. um, in terms of who would I like to see, yeah. what I'm, what I can say is I'm excited. Like we, we just, um, Anthony DeSando, mm -hmm. uh, who was with us maybe five years ago as cousin Joey. Okay. Um, it was just brought back. He, he, he and I played brothers in a movie a million years ago Wow! and we got to hug each other's neck the uh -huh. other day, you uh -huh. know, just in passing, even though we weren't. Yeah. So it's like working on the show is, is great because either they're either people you really, really mm -hmm. admire yeah. or there are people when you have a long and um, infamous career, like I have, yes. um, <laughs> there are people that you get to revisit that you've had, you know, some experience with and, uh, it, it, yeah. Um, I, I'm just looking forward to whoever they do come up with yeah. next because it's never disappointing. Because people are suggesting like Laura San Giacomo, who did quickly down under with Tom. I would like to see Jane Seymour in an episode because he did last. She did Lassiter with Tom back in the. I'd 80s. like to see Jane Seymour too. Yeah. yeah, and I wouldn't be surprised if, um. Oh gosh, Laura San Giacomo. I wouldn't be surprised if even Linda Carter came on the show as a guest. Okay. Guest. All right. So when she does appear, she was on CBS. I know you won't be falling over in your chair. You'll go. Oh no, I'm not surprised. I no, that. no, no. I would. But will I would she be... have to wear the Wonder Woman outfit? That's the question. No, no, she won't have to. She won't have to. No, because she was in Supergirl as a president, as an alien president, believe it or not. And she also did the Dukes of Hazard, and she also did um, Raw. There was other shows that she uh, that she did. Yeah. Um, and um, she's not just Wonder Woman. She's not just it. Wonder Woman, but but she's more familiarized as Wonder Woman. Matter of fact, she was. Um, to get off the subject a little bit, she actually promoted her daughter and the two of them could sing. Oh my God. They are great singing together. And really? she promoted, yeah, her, her daughter <coughs> is also a lawyer. I think she's a lawyer too, but they did a duet. And I mean, she just came out with the extended play and I actually went on Linda's website and I said, listen, you, you got to come on the web. You got to come on these podcasts. I've been going crazy getting anybody from you to, um, matter of fact, going back to the season premiere, and you mentioned Broadway, Laura Witten. Lauren. Lauren, yeah. I even emailed her and I said, listen, please come on the Lauren podcast. Lauren Patton. Yeah. Who plays Witten. Yeah. But that happens. We we do the same thing. We always yeah. invert. People call me Garrett Greg. Yeah. <laughs> Witten Patton. Yeah. Yeah. Lauren Tony Pat Award Lauren winning. Patton. Okay. I, I Tony said Award her. winning Lauren Patton. Yeah, it's Lauren Patton. Yeah. I meant to see, her character's Witten. That's what it is. That's, I think you it's need to so instead of going to Vegas, <laughs> you need to purchase a ticket to go see Jagged Little Pill so that you can go see your Blue Bloods actors live on stage. Ah, yeah, you know, that would be a good idea. She's, you know, because you know, she won the Tony. You're, you, yes, you know that. Yeah. I know. That's how I, that's how I emailed her right after that. And, uh, I, I, I had the privilege of seeing her performance. Ah, way back. Yeah. Uh, before, she, yeah. before COVID, actually. Right. She's 
She's amazing. Yeah, you, you all are. That's why that's why I enjoy this show so much. And you guys got to watch Blue Bloods. Matter of fact, I have a former co-worker who's upset right now because she's working right now when I told her I'm having you on the podcast. And I said, well, you can always check it on YouTube later. She's not a fan. She goes, "What do you? why do you have Greg on the show? No. That's why no. she's upset. Or do I owe her money? <laughs> no, 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 no. Unless you have a unless you have a Chrysler, nah, you don't owe her money. She just no, she loves the show. She loves the show. That's what she told me. Right. And I, but she's she's that working person. right now at my old job. And you uh your job? Yeah. And we she's work- still your friend? Yeah. She didn't take my job. We we worked together at one time. I left because of my health. Got it. That's why I left. And it was a work at home job. So, and, and you have, and, and, and you have these naysayers that like, you should, you should stay home. You should do this, but I'm home 24 seven working. You think I want to get the hell out of here? Yes. Of course you do. <laughs> you know, you, 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 <clears throat> and get on that New Jersey transit train and go see Lauren Pat yep, in yep. Jagged Little Pill. Yep. Oh, wait a minute. I got to make that notation. Jagged Little Pill. Oh, I'm just going to put Broadway because I have taken the New Jersey Transit buses. I've taken the New Jersey Transit train. I've taken the Greyhound that brought you up with the Port Authority bus terminal right by Theater Row. Yeah. Um, I've walked by Times Square. I've been by Times Square. Um, so, I mean, that is something that I really will look into. And, of course, um, for those that don't know what Jagged Little Pill really is, it's actually... About Alanis Morissette. Um, actually, it is a story using Alanis Morissette's music. Yeah. But it's not a story about Alanis Morissette. It's not, okay. I, I apologize. It's a completely original, contemporary, mm-hmm. heart-wrenching uh, story about mm-hmm. a family in modern times, but brilliantly intertwined using Alanis Morissette's music. So yeah. All right. So we have a few minutes left. What's next for Greg? Uh well, I'll be making breakfast <laughs> after we <laughs> I'm talking up. about any projects coming up <laughs> that you want to disclose besides um Blue Bloods. Well, I'm uh, besides Blue Bloods, it, well, Blue Bloods is pretty much all consuming. So when I'm not here shooting, I'm home being a dad. Although our youngest is a senior in high school, so that job will soon be going away. Uh, and then hopefully we'll keep doing Blue Bloods and my wife can travel with me Yeah. when I come to New York every two-week commute. Yeah. Um, there is a, a beautiful uh, screenplay that um, is in the works okay. uh, for me that um, is we're probably going to shoot uh, end of June, early July. Okay. So, um, th- there. Once that gets solidified, I'll be more vocal about that. But yeah. it's a, a an amazing uh, independent feature that I'm hoping to do. But other than that, I kind of protect all my downtime so I can just have Focus my life yeah. in, in between. Because because Blue Bloods, it, it, I'm kind of at their beck and call. Yeah. Even though yeah. I live in LA, it, when scheduling changes happen or whatever, you gotta fly like they go, oh, we right need away. you here. Yeah. I kind of have to pick up and go. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, but he will try, he might try to go to Lake City next July when Donnie and New Kids in the Block are at the Hard Rock. I, I had to plug him. So, yeah. Uh, if you speak, when you speak to you're Donnie, gonna tell me about plugs. There, right? Yeah. 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 So, when you speak to, if you speak to Donnie, tell him, Hey, there's this guy on a podcast who wants to have you and Jenny on, and uh, because you know, I never see him. You anymore. never see him since since COVID. Mm. I uh-huh. we uh, I only see the I literally only see the actors that I'm in scenes with. So you only see like Tom and Abby, and but uh-huh. always tell them literally. they're welcome to come on this podcast. Yeah, well, you're. Yeah. It's a miracle you got a hold of me. Yeah, I think you should, you know, exercise those same. 
um, investigative skills to reach out to them. They're everybody. I, they're really nice folks. Oh yeah, I, I, I did, yeah, I. And did. most of them actually have press agents that yeah. you know yeah. do all that scheduling. So yeah, I think probably but, the reason it was so easy to get through to me is because I'm too cheap to pay a press agent. Oh! You, were, you were wise enough to go right to my website, which yeah. I actually manage and respond to myself. So yes, I was so happy to get the invitation to be yeah. here and the birthday wish. When I did it was his birthday. And the birthday was. And yeah, the birthday that's was. right, you did. Yeah. I when, was... when you gave me the freedom to schedule this, I didn't. it didn't dawn on me that it would, be, oh, the um, launch is T minus four minutes. I think it's actually going to take off. William Shatner will actually Go where no man has gone before. Where only a few men have gone before. Sure, yeah. Um, the, uh, what was I going to say? You were talking about your website. I was talking about my website. Which anyway. is gregoryjabara.com. <laughs> So check it out. Oh, and but, go to yeah, the contact you, us yeah. page. There is a little, there's a little snippet where you can actually send them a message. But if you go down a little further, you can actually personally email him. And, and I actually goes, answer the email. Yeah. And he happily answers it. He got back to me so fast. I was like, I don't know if wow. I say happily, but I do yeah. actually answer the emails. Yeah. So and it, some of them it, like the ones from creditors, I'm not yeah. really happy yeah. to respond to. Yeah. But I thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Thank you, and Joey. Come on anytime. If I had known that the Dodgers were gonna play until one o'clock in the morning, I might have made this a little later. But wow. um, thank you for getting me up. It's yeah, a- no problem. Oh, no problem. I thank you for coming on. I thank you for being part of a great cast of Blue Bloods. And I really do hope that the casting people are listening, you got to, and the writers, you got to keep this on for at least eight more seasons because you got to, you got to get up there with Law and Order SVU. You They're need, on you need to direct that. You need to direct that wish to Viacom CBS. Yeah. Because well, if it were up to our executive producers and the casting, yeah, they, we would run the show forever. But yeah. unfortunately, they're not the decision makers. Right, right. Well, who knows? Maybe somebody at CBS might be watching these. Because believe it or not, there's a um, there's a guy on my Facebook, my personal Facebook page, who actually has a, a little TV network on Roku. And I have been begging and pleading with him to put these podcasts on his network because I, I want to give some great entertainment. I'm just a guy in Philadelphia. Believe it or not, I'm just near New boy. Brunswick. Let's clarify. Yeah, I'm a Somers- Brunswick. Wait, where are you from? Somerset. Where- I'm from. So I'm actually. I was born in New Brunswick. I lived in Somerset, but I now live in Philadelphia, and I lived in Philadelphia. Where are you in Queens. Philly? Like Bala Kenwood S- Center, um, City Center. Where are you? Let's just say it this way, and we got about two minutes left of recording mm-hmm. time. I am right next. The launch to- is in one minute and twenty nine seconds. Okay, so, we'll get so I got a minute. That. I got a minute twenty seconds on. to say. No, no, we can, we can, we, yeah. as we're being cut yeah. off, it'll, yeah. they'll be in the air. They oh, yeah. pulled the rocket away from the, oh, they, uh, oh, uh, they got to get to where it's going to launch. Okay. Yeah, they're going to, they're going to go. Good, good, good. Goodbye, good. I, William Shatner. I mean, good luck, <laughs> William Shatner. Um, no, I actually live, if I looked out my window, I will see CHOP and the hospital of the University of Pennsylvania. That's how close I am to University City. I'm oh, by you okay. can. Yeah. And believe it or not, I was, and, and this is a crazy story. I was doing some temp work right over by Franklin Field. And that was the day that former President Trump was at Franklin Field for his daughter Tiffany's graduation. Wait, from what? Grade school? Well, grade school from college? Oh, from college? college? How long ago was that for crying out loud? Did we just get cut off again? Is that our Wi-Fi issue? It's it's the interview gods going, wait, you can't be doing this while there's launch. Oh, this? we're still here. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah it's just 10, 9, 8. Oh, do you have your TV? Do you have your TV on? Uh no, but I will put it on very quickly. And I have it on channel three. So uh, that's the CBS affiliate. Well, uh, it's on Discovery Channel. Oh, they've they've ignited the engines. Wow. It launched. There it goes. 
You know, yeah. what is that? My question is what, I guess it must be a drone that captures that um, footage of it from about, looks like it's maybe a thousand feet in the air. Probably. And the, and the rocket blows right past it. It's, it's that CGI Ooh. image that they used yeah. when they were doing, you know, demonstrating yeah, like the space what, the, what it would look like, you know, yeah. for digital. Yeah. But so it doesn't look real. Yeah. We've been so yeah. trained that that point of view is, you know, fictional. That yeah. When they actually accomplish that using a drone, you go, wow, that's impressive. Yeah. yeah, it is. It really is. All right. So the recording has ended at that point, but we're not worried Wait, about that. Wait, we've one. it's already it's already run out. The recording was. So you'll get the the link to this when I'm done. Oh, but we're still but streaming live. We're still on, yeah, we're still on YouTube. So I have to leave my pants on and we can't talk about I, body we, yeah, we, yeah, we Cause, both because I was gonna say I, I it um it, it really oh, wow. is, it really does kind of look like a penis, the rocket, doesn't it? Of course they got Gail King doing it. You would think Nora O'Donnell would get up to do this. But oh they have commentators on what yeah. oh, you're on CBS watching. I'm CBS? on CBS. Yeah. And of course, they, it's Gail King, Oprah's friend. But, See on the Discovery Channel, it is the Blue Origin mm -hmm. Space Launch live feed, so they're not throwing yeah. commercials or color commentating. Yeah, well, yeah. So, but I mean, it's looking interesting. They're pay. at. They're it, traveling more than seventeen hundred miles per hour, and they're yep. at one hundred and ten thousand feet. Wow. Yeah, because they're showing they're showing an image of the Earth from the ship. Please just make sure that William Shatner doesn't have a heart attack. He's ninety. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah, that's all we need. <laughs> all of a sudden, we come back. He, they they land, and all of a sudden, and they're only going to be up there what eleven minutes, something like that. Yeah, it's it's a it is a fleeting. What are they yeah. doing? Stage separation? What's going on now? Uh I don't know. We saw a little flare. Yeah. What's amazing, though, is that all this is ha this is all happening in Arizona or New Mexico. It's not even they're yeah. not even doing it at Cape Kennedy or Vandenberg mm. Space Force Base. I hate that name. Yeah. Yeah. They've changed. Yeah. SpaceX. That's what it is. Or well, no, 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 not no, SpaceX. Blue, blue. Our, our military now has our Space Force. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I'm not a fan of that term. It, no. It's a little cartoony, but and, and just to let you guys know, we're still on the YouTube. Um, for those that needed to catch up. Um, oh yeah, it's not. We're not talking about aerospace. This yeah, we're not. We're 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 just we're just we're we're watching we're talking about Joey and where he lives in Philly. That's what we're talking. Yeah, about. Yeah, we we're talking about we are we were talking about University City, and I'm like I'm actually about a 20 minute walk from Rittenhouse Square in Center City. Oh. Yeah. So Center City is like within within reach. That's South Philly is, is about um, two miles away. Right. Or not even two miles away. I'm actually they actually considered us part of South Philly. Do you but, miss um, do you miss bookbinders? Never went there. Never went there. Never went there. But well, because actually you grew up a little further south. Yeah. A little further north. Yeah. I rem now I remember Greasy Tony's. Gre Did you say Greasy Tony's? Yep. And what, are they, what are they known for? Oh, they had a they had a uh, like cheesesteak joint, and then there's a place in Highland Park, and I'm gonna mute. Oh, wait a minute. The capsule separated according to CBS. Oh, uh, right. Velocity. The new shepherd is now. So it's it's yeah, yeah it's beginning it's just sort of floating in outer space experience. Yeah. Oh yeah, we're gonna get to watch the uh, booster land. I always that's amazing to me. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, Greasy Tony's was a uh, was a almost like a hangout joint. It was like the grease like truck. Like a great dive. Yeah, yeah, down at Rutgers, and then in Highland Park, there's a there's a place called. White, White Rose, used to be open twenty four hours. Oh, oh my god! This this place had hamburgers, cheeseburgers, twenty four seven. Chocolate peanut butter milkshakes. Oh no, that's fifty fifties. That's fifty fifties. That's here in Philly. 
Wait, I there's have, a place called 5050s that makes a chocolate nifty. peanut butter milkshake? Nifty 50s, yep. Nifty, oh, oh, like the Nifty 50s, 50. kind of a throwback place? Yeah, it's a, it's an actual throwback place. Where they wear yep. Bobby Socks and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, actually, actually, the... Um, the four Seasons. Not like the Four Seasons, but That's like... the um, 60s, really. Oh, yeah, yeah. But no, they actually had the, like, um, the old boys. paper hats. Where yeah. they were angled. Right. Yeah. The way I don't remember if the waitresses were Bobby Sots or not, but it was Do they have car hops like on roller skates like in uh no, 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 no. No. Not not these. They do now have outdoor dining, but um matter of fact, um that thing is falling back to earth. Yes, it is. You can see it. Yes. Look at it. You're I'm watching that ground. You know, if that booster had a soul, it'd be shaking in its boots right now, going, "Oh no!" <laughs> right? Please! Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. looks like they're about to fire the engine. Can you see that? Yeah. I think, I think it looked like it did. Or, or, or is the rocket on fire? Maybe that's what it is. No, it's not showing the rocket on fire. Do you are you are you, do you see the are you getting the twin the two I got the camera split shot? Yeah, the I got split the screen. Split. Yeah, I got on the, the left. Screen. They were showing, so you know they're gonna. Oh, this yeah, I saw a little flame pop out, but I quickly that thing it. they um yeah, how do they prevent it? This will be cool. I, I love I this. Think I, love, I have to admit, I love yeah. watching this stuff. Oh yeah. I, I used to uh, I did see a flame for a second. There we go. Oh, I'm a oh there we okay. There, they've ignited. Oh, ah, so that's how it lands. Oh, you're a little ahead of me. Yeah. It's flame boosted on, and it's landing like it never left. Yeah, like it, like it, like it launched. And 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 that's CBS for you. That's your, what, what's most impressive is that is completely autonomous. Yeah, like and, it has all the sensors mm -hmm. to safely bring itself back. Yep. Look at that. Yeah, it that, that is, is awesome. You know, Buck Rogers. That we used to, used to see that in you oh, know like. God old black and white TV, they'd have the, the really cheesy model of a spaceship on a string and they'd mm -hmm. put a firecracker or a flare on the bottom <laughs> and light it. And yep. then they'd, or a sparkler, right? Uh -huh. And then they'd lower it on a string have it land and you go, ooh, look at that. Yeah. Space and, travel. And now it really um, looks like that. That's what's yeah. crazy. Until it came out in the 70s, 80s, late what 70s, did? early 80s. Buck Rogers in the 25th century. Will Gil, Will Gil Gerard and a very young uh, Aaron Gray. Uh, we're talking about the original TV oh, series yeah. or the original radio show? Oh, no, radio was, be of course, that was before my time. That would be my daddy's time. Oh, yeah, they're, cool. they're already deploying the shoots? Yep. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah. yeah this thing's already, they, well, those are the drag shoots that they're yeah. writing it. Now here, yeah. now they're deploying the, the biggins. Yeah. That, yep. All that technology is so incredibly impressive. Yeah. Oh, God. Guys, just Please, let just you know. Just let as... William Shatner be alive. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to keep chatting. We're, we're talking about um, the great William Shatner going to space for 11 minutes. It's like we're not even talking about whoever the other. I don't even know who else is in that capsule. Ben, it's like it's such a brilliant, many, it's such a brilliant many, publicity stunt. No. Yeah. Yeah. It was more on William Shatner than anybody else because yeah. Jeff Bezos went on the first one and he brought one of the female astronauts that was on the earlier flights when when women were on she was like one of the first women on space flights. Well, Actually. she was in the first group of women to be considered for yeah, space flights. She never flight. actually she actually never got to go uh, yeah. work as an astronaut or you yeah. know into into outer space. Yeah. Which is why Bezos Look at, yeah, here we go. I'm, I'm watching. I'm uh, watching. You're, yeah, and you're a few seconds ahead of me, I, I can tell. Yeah. Um, yeah. Have, have they touched they, down they, yet? No, not yet. They are, um, I'd say within a thousand feet still you in look the at air. This camera shot, you can't yeah. believe. Yeah. It looks, yeah. it really doesn't look real. You got to put on CBS2 in New York, okay? Because I'm, I'm watching, watching on the Discovery Channel. Yeah, you're, yeah. Yeah, Which he's watching on Discovery. The, I'm watching on CBS three in Philadelphia. They're the official uh yeah. New Shepherd. Yeah. Oh, and, okay. Three, 
two, no. one. Oh, yeah. You, uh, I'm, about five, I'm about five seconds behind you. Yeah. <clears throat> yep. Look Blue at that Michelle, dust. That Somebody. is an awesome landing. That is that is worth twenty some million dollars to be on. Isn't that and crazy? now there, there's a there was a story out the other day that in I think it's twenty four or twenty five there's going to be like almost a hot air balloon ride towards space for two hundred fifty thousand dollars. I'm like, yeah. There's a there's there's some spectacular footage of the guy who did the highest. Yeah. Free fall, uh, skydive, yeah. right? He yeah. went up in a balloon uh -huh. and then jumped off a platform, and you could see the curvature uh, of the earth. He was so high up. Yeah. Oh, Pretty yeah. crazy. Yeah. Oh. oh. All right. We're at 11.01. I need to move yes. on. You but got briefly, to. we had a little space involved. Oh, in yeah. Our we, we had a great blood. chat. Some Blue Thank Origin you, while Come talking on. about Blue Bloods. Yes. And I uh, hope, and guys, check out Blue Bloods Friday nights on CBS. At the bottom of the screen, I also have GregoryJabar.com. Greg, thank you for coming on. Um, thank, thank you, thank you for taking your time. Anytime you want to come on, just let me know. Thank you, you guys very take much. Care. I appreciate it. This was very All nice. Right. Great way to All wake right. up. Better than caffeine. <laughs> I got mine right here. Yeah, I, I should have done it, no less. All right, you take care, Greg. And thank please you, you say hi to the cast for me if you get the opportunity. And tell I them, will. I'll, bo I'll boast and share the link for sure. All right, thank you so much. You take care. Thank you, you too. All bye right, bye-bye now. All righty.